Hello again. I'm Katarzyna Piatek Grabarska. I come from Poland. I am here as a globe teacher and also as a scientist ambassador. I'm a scientist ambassador in Poland. So that's why you can see here the logo of the scientist project. Scientists is the community for science education in Europe, but I will say uh, some uh, more um, later, okay, in the end of the presentation. And the um, topic of the presentation is, if, uh, can students become a citizen scientist? Uh, and how I can see it, using the, um, uh, using the uh, educational environmental programs in teaching science at school. Um, I will show you also after that the scientific resources who can help science teachers uh, for citizen science. <coughs> and the uh, answer for this question is, uh, in my opinion, <laughs> yes, they can. But firstly, we must arouse the reflection for nature. And uh, I think we can do it a few, uh, we can do it using a few steps. And um, what is important for me. Uh, we must arouse in the curiosity about the natural world and need for contact with nature. I think this is the most important thing, and we should do it even as if we are parents uh, from the uh, early year of our child, uh, exploring the diversity of the natural world based on our own discoveries and experiments, not only showing them that, but doing it, making science real, acquiring uh, the ability to take scientific notes, maps, charts, shaping the attitude of the researcher and cooperating with scientists, shaping our responsibility for the environment. And um, here you can see logos of many educational uh, projects and initiatives which can uh, help teachers um, do science at school, uh, do citizen science at school also. Uh, all of them, which you can see here, uh, I am using or I used. So uh, I was involved in them, uh, and um, I am involved. And how I do? Uh, how do I deal with this in my school? This is school which is located in Zabrze. This is um, south of Poland. This is um, a big city, uh, about two hundred thousand um, population, and um, it is very um, difficult to uh, make science in such a big city, especially that we are post-industrial city. Uh, our city um, was based on the coal mining, so it's really difficult to make science near the school. And uh, I would like to show you how I do it using many uh, um, international projects and national projects and uh, initiatives. Uh, but, uh, Maybe we have to try if the film is <laughs> okay. Here. Yeah. No. I no. Get a clip. Oh, no. No. It works when we do that before. We always have the option. Oh, here. You have to accept. Yes, but I. You do the ring? Oh, here. Yeah, yes, that's one. Okay. But we have to know, we have to change. Oh, okay. So, mm -hmm. yeah, but, but for some reason it's compressing it. So if we so go we to directly to the film, we can. Here. And if you the sound
and the secret shield see uh, the most place um, was um, about the globe project uh, why uh, because globe program because it is the closest to my heart I am a globe teacher I've been a globe teacher for um, almost 10 years and I really uh, did a lot of very interesting uh, things with um, GLOB uh, program with uh, not only with students but also with teachers and, um, and I, 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 want, um, I don't want to, to speak a lot of the, about the GLOB program because you know uh, about it and we talked about it yesterday also a lot but uh, this is um, um, the, the global learning and observation to benefit the environment and in fact uh, it gives uh, us, as a teachers, um, a lot of tools and possibilities uh, to, to do that. <laughs> and the uh, benefits of particip participating in the GLOB program for me and my students. So, um, first, raising the research of skills of young people in the field of science subject, uh, scientific understanding of processes taking place on Earth, and uh, shaping the ecological awareness. And um, I think this all uh, the uh, GLOB programs, um, GLOB program and um, accompanying competition feed into the curriculum, um, and we have to do the curriculum as uh, Aika said. Uh, but uh, not only we have a time uh, during the uh, lesson time. So uh, a lot of these activities which I uh, taken under the GLOB program um, was taken. Um, on the extra classes, um, and, and, and it is taken. Uh, yeah, it is um, taken uh, all, um, during the extra classes, but uh, it can um, fit into the curricula very, very well, I think. And what we uh, do: um, observation of degree and the type of the cloudiness. And in the film, you could see and the class project, and it was the project. Um, which um, I was involved with the school of um, from France, from Bordeaux, um, on the west um, coast of the France, um, and uh, we uh, did the observation almost all year, all school year, um, type of clouds and um, degree of the cloudiness, and we um, did it very regularly, and um, each month uh, we. Um, did after our observation um, graphs and um, after all year we uh, put it um, together we presented our project um, uh, in uh, Vienna in um, the conference for geosciences it was the uh, geosciences information for teachers and um, we could compare differences between um, the ocean climate which is on the west uh, coast uh, of France. Uh, and um, in Poland, you know, we are in the center of the Europe, central uh, part, and we uh, have a lot of um, continental uh, mass, which coming uh, to us from um, uh, Russia. So we could compare uh, the differences between it, and uh, it was, um, I can say, a little bit scientific project. And uh, it was taken under the GLOB program, but also under the uh, it winning um, platform. It, this, it, it, it was very good combination because we could cooperate with each other all the time. Other, hydrological research of Bitonka River. This is a small river which um, uh, is in Zabrze. Phenological observation reporting data to the uh, data by <coughs> based in the uh, USA and uh, implementation of numerous educational projects. Um, a lot of projects, uh, GLOBE program comes to teachers. So uh, if we would like to um, be involved in them, we can, but uh, we have to, we, it, it, the motivation is needed. Yes. <coughs> and what is, uh, this is the um, challenge, uh, which has started two days ago. I think uh, you can join even now, um, it um, uh, we took all month. Uh, we have to do cloud observation, and this is the challenge between if you have a team, 
um, students and teacher, they can do uh, up to 10 observations per day and um, that school, that team, uh, which uh, will have the most observations, the most among, um, uh, kind of observations, they will um, uh, get the thank you from the NASA uh, on the film. The NASA will, yes, we show the film with the thank you to them. And uh, now we are in scientists. Um, I will need uh, to, um, yes, yes, to show another film <laughs> about the scientists project. So, which one? Okay. Yeah, thank you. Right now, there are science projects taking place all across Europe. In fact, there are so many projects taking place, it can sometimes be hard if you work in science education either as a teacher or as someone working in science projects to keep informed about all the new developments that are taking place in your field. Scientix is a European network for all those working in the field of science education, for teachers and for people who work in science education projects. Scientix can provide you with the resources to use in your teaching Scientix organises workshops where science teachers from different countries can come together and share best practices in their subjects. Scientix's national contact points can help you find national projects for you and your pupils to get involved in. If you work in science education projects, Scientix can help you connect with schools to collaborate with on your projects. We have a community of engaged science and mathematics teachers that you can present the activities of your projects to directly at our workshops. If you want to collaborate with other science educators, why not get started today by visiting our website at scientix.eu. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, the, the, the other one, sorry. Let's see. So, okay, we can click here. Right here? Oh. That one? Yeah. There we go. Okay, thank you. Uh, yes. Uh, I also uh, have some printed copies um, about the scientists, so if you would like to take some, uh, please take it. And um, um, after, oh, oh, okay, I'll see it now. I also prepared some um, uh, scientists uh, projects and resources uh, which could help um, teachers, um, geography um, teachers. So if you would like to take some, please do it. And um, it was really difficult because <laughs> John asked me to tell something about scientists and scientific resources. And it was really difficult to uh, choose um, the uh, right ones because we have um, on scientists platform about 2,000 resources. So to find something interesting for you uh, and um, which um, communicate um, directly with the citizen science, um, it wasn't very easy, but uh, I tried to choose the most uh, interesting uh, for teachers and the most helpful for, the, for teachers. So the first, of course, this is the GoLab, and um, you c uh, if you uh, use GoLab, you can um, go. You have the access to the online laboratories, uh, but they are run by researchers, um, re uh, researchers and research centers. So uh, I think. This is very useful um, and um, it makes 
designs uh, really uh, rare. Uh, here you can learn by experience. And the next one is a um, mass project. The mass project um, is um, direct to teachers uh, and um, will help teachers with uh, no motivation. Um, it's motivated and attracts students to science. So uh, there are a lot of um, materials connected uh, with um, um, how to how to encourage uh, students uh, to make science, um, how to motivate them, how to inspire them. So I think this is um, really good um, and very good materials. You can find it, of course. This is the Pol also the, the Pol uh, there was a Polish partner. So this is the Polish project, but uh, the resources are of course in few languages. And uh, what I um, forgot to mention that um, if you uh, would like to have um, um, something from Scientix in your language, you can do it. So uh, it, it, you, you don't have to uh, take it, in, for example, in English. Uh, you can take it um, in your um, mother language. Yes, and um, there are also uh, models of training. So uh, how digital tools can motivate and attract students to science. What was said yesterday that uh, the students now uh, need uh, something uh, which will attract <coughs> them uh, to do the science, but which they uh, also um, are familiar with that, each day, yes, what, what, they, what they like. <coughs> and this is the project which I am involved in um, now, exploitation of research results in school practice. And this is cooperation between uh, few uh, research institutions in Europe, from France to Romania and from Poland. And um, this is a great project because we have um, possibility to have um, online lessons uh, from research um, institutes uh, in Polish and in English. And uh, after um, each lesson, when students also uh, can be involved in um, asking um, <laughs> questions, uh, they have a lot of um, materials, worksheets, uh, which they um, have to do uh, using uh, uh, scientific, res scientific research. And another one, Eduard Tick. Um, this is a um, project, um, uh, also a Polish project, yes, from the Polish um, Institute of Science in Warsaw. And uh, here we have um, citizen science um, environment, uh, environmental monitoring program. Um, exactly, the citizen science. So students can um, make observations and uh, send the data uh, to the monitoring program. A very, very good uh, project. And of course, uh, I show you only this project where uh, which you can uh, involve. In. So that's for all. And uh, other ones, uh, Astro Edu. Yes, this is um, uh, more familiar with uh, astronomy. <coughs> and what I uh, found um, interesting simply science, inspiring science, digital earth, uh, especially for uh, the uh, geography teachers. I also mentioned uh, in, in the printed copies about it. And summarizing, um, what I said yesterday, I think that we have to start from the early year of um, our children uh, because um, um, we can, uh, we can uh, motivate them, we can motivate them to do research, uh, to, to be citizen scientists, but we have to firstly uh, arouse their passion, what I said yesterday, and we have to do when they are a child. And um, <coughs> as I, because I am a teacher of students from 13 to 19, and um, telling the truth, I like uh, to work the most with um, this um, group from 13 to 16. But um, as I. Um, um, so, uh, from my experience, uh, 
what I know, that uh, that students uh, who are up to 14, they are really interested. We can um, do everything with them. And after that, uh, as I read, some enclosure, I think, has placed. Maybe it is connected with the real, um, that they are from the teenager or they are going up to the uh, adults. I, I don't know why, but uh, I think that we have to um, start from the small age because uh, it is really very difficult to involve um, elders, uh, teenagers. So, <laughs> teachers, let's go to work. <laughs> and thank you very much. Just a comment that, uh, you know, as from a teacher's perspective, <clears throat> there's there's just so much. So you can get, it's easy to get shut down by the fact that there's so many different insertion points here. And even Globe, when you open up the Globe website, it's like, oh my gosh, there's so much. And it's all so amazing, but it's just so much. And from my perspective, sometimes it's like, I just kind of fall back to the textbook sometimes because the textbook has yes. everything I need to teach. It's right there, do, do, do. I can open up, it's one place. But we can do everything. You, you, you can't do everything, I think. We have to choose uh, from the amount of resources, we have to choose yeah. something interesting. But how do we do that as a teacher? Like when there's just so much, how do we, how do we not just shut down and revert back to the easy way? It's almost like we have to rewrite the textbooks to include some of the stuff in it. So when I open the textbooks, I'm seeing citizen science in the textbook and not having to go and like search these vast quantities of, of, of resources. It's like we have to find a way of packaging. You have to feel the science inside. Yeah. There was a very good question from you, I think, to iPad. Uh, why, uh, when uh, you started, is and why? And uh, I, I, I put a, a moment for that uh, question because uh, what, what, will, what would I answer? And um, I am, uh, <laughs> we said yesterday, we are crazy teachers, yes? <laughs> <laughs> so, it is a good term for us. And um, uh, I was inspired um, by my... Um, um, how to say it uh, in, in, in English. Uh, during when I was um, doing uh, earth sciences um, uh, study, um, I um, have had a, a very good uh, examples. And um, the main, my main teacher, um, the professor, uh, he is the very famous uh, glaciologist. And uh, I think that uh, uh, he is um, the, that man who really inspired me to do science. And we uh, did a lot of activities, very interesting activities um, during, uh, um, our, um, during our study, and um, especially in my group, because I, I finished the, uh, the glaciology, uh, for, uh, the faculty. Uh, so he inspired me, yes. Mm. And after that, after the study, I, I unfortunately didn't stay um, at the university because, uh, unfortunately, I don't know about unfortunately, <laughs> but in, in, in that moment I, ca I, I couldn't. And, and after that I, um, go, uh, I went to school and I became um, a teacher. And I really like my, um, my job. I really like to do it. And uh, I don't like to um, complain. I don't, I, I, I don't like finding difficulties. I think that if we want to do something, we can do it. But we have to feel the need. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. And feel free to take some photos.